Hello, welcome to Empowering Everyone, How Mural Scales with Webflow. My name is Josh Jacobs. I'm a senior product designer here at Mural, uh, based out of Atlanta, Georgia. And with me is my colleague, Marius. Marius, why don't you introduce yourself? Hey, my name is Marius Jurz. I'm based in Germany, Dresden, and I'm a senior web designer here at um, Mural. I'm passing back to Josh. Thanks, Marius. So before we get into how Mural scales with Webflow, we'll overview briefly our agenda. So today we're going to be going through how we have identified roadblocks. We are going to go through how we have solved for those roadblocks with our new content model. Talk about how we've enabled our team to use those tools and a quick look into the future of Mural. Passing it over to Marius to quickly overview what Mural is. Thanks, Josh. So Mural is a collaborative intelligence tool centered about an industry-leading digital whiteboard solution. Teams big and small around the globe use Mural to connect and inspire innovation. So we allow teams to work in real time or asynchronous um, on an infinite and resizable whiteboard canvas using stickies, images, videos, um, GIFs, icons, text, and more. So, and with our facilitation superpowers features, we empower thoughtful hosts to guide through focused, productive, but also fun sessions. So Josh now um, will tell you uh, what scale with Webflow means. Um, Josh? Thanks, Marius. Uh, before we get into the meat of the presentation, we wanted to take a moment to uh, define what we mean by scale. So what does it mean at Mural to scale or to scale better? Uh, first off, it means uh, enabling all of our teams to move faster, enabling the web team, enabling the content team, marketing, and so on. It also means producing better results, right? We want to get better numbers. We want to get them in a quicker uh, timeline, and we want to just work better. And that also means maximizing growth, right? We want to grow bigger. We want to grow faster, and we want to do so um, in a way which benefits all of your own. But to boil it down, really what we're talking about is removing roadblocks, not just for us on the web team, but for everyone at Mural. Marius, why don't you talk through how we've identified some roadblocks at Mural? Yeah, sure. So during the pandemic, Mural underwent massive growth because the market for collaborative um, software exploded. People everywhere in the world were looking for a way to collaborate and innovate remotely. As Mural grew in all departments, the Mural web team also scaled from one to nine people. As a team, we felt the responsibility to not only uh, complete work, but also improve processes cross-functionally. With people around the globe working on our marketing website, we needed systems that allowed us to produce fast results, but at a scalable level. So what we did was a component audit. Due to the organic growth and the absence of rules and guidelines, the styles and components on our website outgrew our ability to maintain overview and consistency. We looked through yeah, about 70 static and 30 dynamic template pages, and then used our tool Mural to collect hundreds of screenshots of different components and styles we found uh, during the audit of our website. In a collaborative series of workshops with our team, um, deter we determined which components we should keep, update, or kill entirely. The ultimate goal was to harmonize the design of our website, but also to simplify the building processes and maintenance of our site. What we did next was a CMS audit. And uh, in this audit, we identified the CMS as an area of opportunity. With no standardization in place, it also grew very organically. And this led to several problems. Editors encountered lots of different patterns in our CMS, which made it kind of hard for them to establish best practices and routines. We first took down a list of each collection and where they were being used, deciding which to keep and which to remove. We captured our entire CMS structure then in a spreadsheet to harmonize all fields, field types, and help texts. And then, yeah, next up to our enterprise strategy. So Webflow's enterprise account team offered a helping hand throughout the whole process. They, they've been awesome, really helpful. We were able to learn from best practices other enterprise teams implemented with Webflow and in all the open conversations we had with the Webflow Enterprise account team, they listened to our needs and provided valuable guidance on how to scale with Webflow. With Reverse Proxy as a service for enterprise teams, Webflow introduced a simple way to connect multiple Webflow projects. Now it's a matter of minutes to append a Webflow project as a subfolder to our main URL. 
Um, to tell you more about what we call the content model, I hand it over to Josh. Thank you, Marius. So we've identified the roadblocks. We knew where our problems lie. We knew what we needed to fix. So we set forth to implement the improvement of our systems in a project that we call the content model. The content model stands for a series of optimizations and standardizations, not only to the CMS and our Webflow project, but also the creation of a new CSS framework that we created to be bespoke for our team, enabling us to get better speed to market and to make things as fast as we physically could. So the framework we developed, right, also called the content model, which is a little confusing. The framework is a CSS framework that takes bits and pieces of other popular frameworks like Client First or Knockout and combines them into a single tool set that was created primarily for enterprise Webflow work. It was designed to be super fast, lean, and easy to scale thanks to a well-documented naming convention and methodology. New users and experienced users of the content model alike could leverage this framework to create new pages, components, and update existing pages faster and better. To do this, we created uh, a system, uh, utility classes, uh, typography classes, and classes to manipulate space above and around elements. Additionally, created a system for sections in the navigator, which enabled us as Webflow users to better navigate and look for elements within our pages. To supplement the new framework we developed, we created a web style guide, which is a series of pages of standardized, documented classes, utility classes, components, all the things that you expect to see in a style guide, which represents not only a series of components, but also a CSS framework. The style guide uh, was set up to be the single source of truth for teams working inside Webflow um, and as a visual reference for non-designers looking to create new pages or content across any team at Miro. We made these style guides to be visually compelling from the ground up with these use cases in mind, not just for the web team, but the content team, the marketing team, legal, anyone who might need to use or leverage these components were kept in mind. Our guide features some really cool things that we're doing. Um, we've got updates uh, that are quality of life, like click to copy hex codes, um, really nice visualizations for spacing systems, and every named component and style guide element is listed for reference here. And to further scale faster and to make our processes leaner, we developed a Figma library, which is basically a one-to-one -one representation of that web style guide. Any classes, colors, components, or typography that you see in the web style guide is reflected in our Figma library. And this just makes it easier for us to build new pages, uh, but not just us, our creative partners as well. So if any team at Mural needs to create a web page uh, in, in Webflow, they have access to the visualizations of our classes, components, and other typography colors. Teams that have used this include legal, content teams, product marketing, Many teams leverage these visualizations to assist in the creation of new pages. One excellent thing that we did in our Figma library was that we added a modal for documentation. And in this documentation modal, we have information on the build status of the component in question, any relevant image specs or character counts, uh, which are, of course, one-to-one -one with our CMS. and the actual uh, class structure and naming convention that was used in the development of that component. And all of this information is included, you know, just to help with any person who may come to this guide in order to build a web landing page. Um, and here's a quote from our SEO manager, Matt Yeager. The content model work helped by standardizing common pages and components to create a streamlined, consistent experience across the site, helping website visitors and Webflow editors alike. It came at a crucial point in our SEO projects that enabled us to quickly stand up new pages without having to worry that we were going to break something. And that's the impact that we were going for, right? Um, utilizing this system, we revamped 23 static pages. We revamped over 20 template pages all in the period of about three months. Um, in addition to that, we improved page speed site-wide by 10 to 15% just from adopting the new framework and by uh, replicating it across the site. 
All of this, of course, contributes to our company-wide goal of getting our signups by way of reducing our customer acquisition cost via SEO. And Matt is one of our key players in the SEO space. He likes it. So how are we empowering everyone at Mural to leverage these tools and to leverage our new systems? The first thing that we set out to do after we, we completed the content model work was to enable our team. So once this vision was complete of a new easy to use CMS and a clean, lean CMS or CSS framework, we began to work on the next phase of our vision, which was creating documentation to empower our marketing and creative partners. This will enable them to better use the CSS as a self-service model. So what does that mean? We created a series of different documentation in a number of different channels. The goal of this documentation is to enable new and experienced team members to create new items or to learn how to do so. There are a number of different channels which we leveraged to enable our team via documentation. The first being Webflow, right? And what does that mean, enabling the team in Webflow? Doing the um, standardization of field descriptions, um, that helps to enable our team to work fast and more efficiently in Webflow. And this includes a series of newly created guides, which we developed in Confluence for things like image optimization or the creation of open graph images. Anything which need to be standardized, we included links to in the field descriptions in Webflow. We also, of course, implemented character counts and file size constraints for every text field and every image. And those are one-to-one -one match to our various pieces of documentation in Figma and in the web style guide, just to ensure everything is consistent. We also use Mural, at Mural, to document how to create items in our CMS. We created a massive Mural called the Webflow Guide, How to Create Any CMS Page the goal of which was to create areas in order to visualize how the fields in the editor connect to the page which is being built. Every CMS collection is represented here and features a screenshot of the editor as well as where the fields in the editor are represented on the page. You can click on the icon and it'll take you right to that visualization. The benefit of this is that anyone who is new to the editor or is familiar with the editor but not sure how to author a collection can go in and easily visualize how to create a CMS item. Other documentation channels we used were Confluence. Um, I mentioned already the dedicated guides for image optimization, uh, open graph image collection creation, and uh, writing of all text. But we also created individual reports for each CMS collection, detailing what was done to that collection as part of the content model work. Links to other documentation about the collection, like how to create an author, an item in the collection. And before and after speed tests, showcasing just how much the pages have improved before and after the work. And lastly, we leveraged Loom to record walkthroughs of all the work for each collection, as well as a brief and easy overview on how to create new CMS items for every collection. And Marius will tell you a little bit about how we put together all of this information into various learning sessions for different teams. Awesome, thanks Josh. Um, we at Mural, we believe that good work should be celebrated and shared. And we felt very strongly about what we've created here at Mural and uh, as a web team, and we wanted to share our efforts across the organization. So we invited associates from all departments that we believe should learn more about our work. That involved people from our brand and creative team, the templates team, the marketing team, PMM, uh, SEO, analytics, legal, and, and many more. So. And in these sessions, we have not only given them an overview of the updates uh, we've made, everything what, what Josh just shared, we also showed all teams how to create, update, and publish new CMS entries uh, from scratch on our site. After our presentations, we concluded with Q&A sessions to address open questions and, and gather feedback. And you can see this quote from, from Jesse. With the content model, we are able to more effectively spread work around the product marketing team to reduce bottlenecks using our limited resources uh, more effectively. 
that was what we were aiming for. And uh, this direct feedback uh, we have gotten out of these sessions. And it's just a small uh, excerpt of the great feedback we've gotten uh, across the company. And yeah, it was in the end, the help of our co-workers here at Mural that made us refine our work even after the major workload uh, was done. Yeah, so what's next for us here at Mural? We will continue to leverage our Webflow Enterprise account team to identify new opportunities to make things better in Webflow because Webflow evolves, uh, Mural evolves, and we just want to take advantage of, of those developments. Um, yeah, and we have already determined areas of our website that would be better kept outside our main project. And with Webflow's Rewrite Proxy as a service feature for enterprise clients, we are continuing to streamline our Webflow setup in the future. And with a bright future planned here at Mural, we plan to create a net new project from scratch to enable um, our team to work in the leanest, cleanest Webflow experience possible. And that's the conclusion for our today's talk. Thanks for having us and have a great conference.